And yeah, we we are live. I like to see that little ticker go like one, two, three, four, five seconds. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it, there's a delay. Anyway, guys, um, happy Sunday. Welcome to another or second uh, uh, Watch Soup episode. Uh, in today's uh, topics, we will be discussing um, TGBs going through some essentials, uh, $10 to $150 essentials that every watch enthusiast should have. Producer Michael, uh, his video with why are luxury watches so expensive. Tim Masso earlier this week talking about the rumored again, 2021 uh, Tudor release of a Submariner revival possibly. And Federico's five reasons why Rolex is the perfect watch. And tonight I'm joined by, as always, uh, my uh, lovely co-host, uh, <laughs> Sanjay from the Engineer Wannabe channel. How are you, man? How you doing? Very good, very good. I'm a little uh, tired. Just put the kids to bed, and they're actually still not asleep. But yeah. <laughs> it was just uh, one of those nights. Uh, my wife took over, thankfully. So yeah, it's it's oh. it's going to be the story of our lives, me and you, Sanjay, for the next uh, you know decade or so. You know, <laughs> putting kids, struggling to put in the kids uh, to bed, and then like you know, getting into this um, this enthusiast, this watch collection love passion that we have yeah uh, what do you have on wrist tonight sanjay i have uh the grand seiko sb gj201 still oh this very is, nice uh, this is the gmt yeah yeah 44 that's, a, that's a great watch man yeah um like if I, if, if I was if i was you know there's a couple of grand seikos that i like you know i just yeah haven't dipped my toe into that grand seiko pool yet but that's that's one of them that's one yeah. of them for sure <laughs> um i am wearing my uh jager and benzinger oh sweet the uh the vintage um edition one it's called um with the hand um guilloche machine turned engine turned and yeah, just, just love it. I just love uh, staring at that watch. Um, so let's um, let's run through the chat, guys, and uh, welcome you guys on board. Also, let us know what you're wearing on wrist tonight. We love, no matter what kind of topic video we do, um, we're always going to ask that because we love it. Blue shirt was first on the list. He was he was in there. I saw him early on. James from the Great Gambino Watch Reviews channel, awesome. He also has a VR channel um that is awesome so please give a, a look uh, when you have a chance chaz from the berg how are you sir uh jcb what's up man how you doing from the other side of the world um uh peter what's up man how you doing uh steve p what's up <laughs> uh keith man, how you doing buddy thanks for coming on um Chris ross what's up bud alex how you doing kevin there he is he digs the slayer shirt yeah i wear the slayer shirt a lot i wear a lot of the same clothes a lot especially in quarantine in the last like year you know like i think i think sanjay i think i've i've worn sweatpants like every day yeah <laughs> oh do man. you, do you uh, get I actually still have to go to the office so oh wow because I do, I still wear my my office clothes. Nothing's really changed except that we can't really do anything fun anymore. <laughs> right, right. No happy hours or anything like that. Or yeah, um, so, I, yeah. I I wouldn't mind staying home for a little while. <laughs> yeah, you know, you get used to it, man. I mean, like you know, I mean, you do have the kids running. I do have the kids running around, and that's kind of distracting. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, you save money on gas and, and all that kind of stuff, and eat at home so I'm, I'm eating a little bit better you yeah. know um <laughs> chaz somebody gets some, some coffee no he's he's all right man he's all right yeah, I'm okay. uh chris hey buddy thanks for stopping in joe what's up uh peter's wearing a sarb 033 one of my many watch regrets selling regrets have you did you ever own the uh the, the sarb 033 I, sanjay i own the 035 so, 035, yeah. Yeah, and that is one of my regrets as well. I sold it at like 150 Canadian when it was at its oh, wow. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's low. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but whatever, yeah. whatever. It's no yeah. big deal. You got some. You got some great watches, man. I, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, Mike uh, with the King Turtle. Uh, Riss Ross with the Zen One Five Eight. Great watch, man. That's a good looking watch. Um. Oh, I saw. It. Where Where did Chaz go? Chaz had. Oh, uh, yeah, the Nine O Three, which is another great. Um, That's the. One. Uh the navi timer right yeah yeah the navi timer uh, it's a, it's an interesting you it's an interesting story behind yeah. that one right yeah so yeah, yeah. so i wouldn't know if it, i don't know if it's a, it's an homage or a copy I, I don't know what what it is i mean you know zinn bought the rights right yeah i, mean, I wouldn't he, call that an homage yeah so I, neither would i um and he uh and he uh and he made it thinner right yeah i think yep. um and uh and just here he's uh He's wearing his loom shot uh, uh, build. Um, Alex has got that Pelagos man. I think I think a, a, a Pelagos uh, will be calling my name in the next year or so. Yeah. Um, such a great watch. Um, good old Pogue for Mountain Standard Time. Well, so uh, like I said, guys, we went through the list of um, topics or videos um, that were uh, that came up in the last. Uh, week by some of the bigger content providers. And so Sanjay, I'm gonna let you uh, kick it off. Which one did you wanna, We Sanjay picked two and I picked two. And uh, and Sanjay, I'm gonna let you uh, kick it off and then let us know which one you wanna talk about first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we should uh, talk about the TGV one, TGV one, get that out of the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so TGV here was going through uh, seven essentials uh, for every watch enthusiast. And uh, before I get started, I'd like to take a refreshing drink from my uh, uh, delicious a root beer. That, uh, <laughs> not we're not sponsored, not sponsored, <laughs> but but it's a it's a great drink. It's, a, it's no, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of uh, kind of alluding to uh, what we're right. going to talk about. Right, right. But yeah, TGB went uh, through some interesting. Uh, watch enthusiast items and uh i think uh it it kind of took me off guard even though i i know like some of the the controversy with tgv and uh, you know i'm not here to to sling mud at at tgv but uh this this kind of really hit me quite in in quite a few places because mm -hmm. uh first he, it started off with the the wristwatch check right and right. Uh, his wrist, wristwatch check is now the the squally 30 atmos yeah which is now his favorite, his favorite. watch. Yeah, ever. I caught that. Yeah, <laughs> beating beating the the Rolex Explorer. Yeah, um, of course it was the one he helped design. Uh, right, and uh, and yeah, so it started from from there and went downhill. Um, I think the first few I was uh, I was thinking were okay. I, I don't have uh, the the order in in what they what TGV. Uh, went through, but he talked about you know some Cape Cod cloths. Yeah. Um, he talked about uh, a watchmaker's toolkit, the one of the cheaper mm -hmm. ones you can get from Amazon. And then he threw this uh, zinger, which is the the Carl Friedrich Unico, um, and it was a brand new uh, one watch uh, holster that you can throw in your pocket. <laughs> but of course, TGV designed, right? And uh, and he designed this. Uh, there was no disclaimer of any uh, any compensation. There's a there's a link to uh, Carl Friedrich, uh, and uh, and that was uh, <laughs> I think that was a, a really long commercial. It uh, it was yeah. one of the longest segments in in the in the seg in the video, and it kept going uh, and going and going, and I, I felt like I was watching an infomercial, and then. Um, yeah, there was no disclaimer of of any compensation, so I guess the uh, the assumption is that he did it out of the goodness of his heart. He designed this amazing uh, one watch holster, and uh, and he's not getting any commission. The same with the Squale, same with uh, his amazing wrist candy watch club uh, watch strap, and right. uh, <laughs> and so yeah, it just uh, went on and on. And then you know he made a quick, really quick uh, suggestion that everything is available on the urban gentry amazon storefront mm -hmm. uh, which again is okay to do i think but there was no disclaimer of any compensation or uh, you know uh, any of that 
affiliate link or anything. You just said, you know, all these things are available to purchase. And uh, and yeah, so I, I, I felt like there was a massive, massive conflict of interest there. Uh, and, you know, and it, it really disappointed me seeing all that. And uh, I think it, it makes me really uh, skittish about <laughs> skittish about continuing to even even do YouTube or uh, you know even going forward with this is uh, if this is what you know the the path leads down to. But that's just a, a internal uh, battle, a conversation I had with myself. But yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on the on the video? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I I know where you I see where you're coming from, right? Um, so that aside, I felt like he's done this type of video so many times before, um, and 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 this and the, I look, I mean, a lot of people who enter into watch collecting, and then do their research on YouTube, um, you know, usually land somewhere with with TGV. They they they, they fairly uh, quickly. I mean, I know I did. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. a few years ago, he was one of the big heavy hitters, and he still kind of is a heavy hitter, right? I mean, he still is. And he's got over 400,000 subs. Um, so, um, you know, there is a a good service that he's doing here, although it's not altruistic, right? But, but it is a service that he's doing. He's going through some of the essentials that he's um, – that, he, that he needs – that he feels like a watch enthusiast or collector. I Look, I – I feel like anytime I consume any kind of media, I assume that somebody is trying to sell me something anyway. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, I, 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 I understand where, where you're coming from. You, you got a little put off uh, by it. Um, I, I just, I just <laughs> as, you, as you're showing off your A&W group here, right? <laughs> um, but uh, for me, it's just like, you know, eh, you know, this is TGV, you know, it's like that drunk uncle. Oh, it's, it's my drunk uncle. You know, don't mind him. You know what he's yeah. saying. You know what I mean? There was, so, there, was, <clears throat> there was something interesting, I think really ironic was when he started uh, saying you could buy books um, on eBay and Amazon. And he was talking about the death of watch journalism. <laughs> and how you know no one can be trusted and and i was thinking wow you know what yeah is this? it's like yeah. the cover calling the pot black <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, absolutely um jeff saying good day yes yeah, slayer ross they do they do uh rob you should do a segment read clubhouse lots of watch content daily you know i just got turned on to clubhouse um i got the app i'm still a little lost figuring it out um have you been on, on Clubhouse yet, Sanjay? I mean, I yeah. hear it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you, I, I kind of have an iPhone for a week and then my Samsung for a week. Mm -hmm. So the week I have my iPhone, I'm kind of on Clubhouse for quite a bit. Um, and I, I, I find it interesting. I think that a lot of the watch con conversations now have kind of become really stale. Um, okay. So it, there was a lot of interesting conversations at first, but now it's... Uh, it's a bit re repetitive now. Yeah, and and the the daily risk check, clubhouse conversations are cool. I okay, think you just pop in for a bit, listen to what everyone else is wearing, and then if you want to chime in, you can chime in. Those things are are kind of cool still, but yeah, I still um, got to figure out how to navigate through it. Um, but I, I will eventually. I will. It's just like any new social media uh, platform. It takes me like a a little while. And I mean, I'm, I'm I know I'm 47, but I. I'm not that old, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Alex, I don't mind TGV for casual watch stuff, but that stupid dinosaur, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do like, I do like TGV. And what, that's kind of why I, I'm more disappointed by things like these, this, that when it does happen, I, I do enjoy, you know, some of his videos. Like I enjoyed the Omega Constellation review that he just did as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so and he was actually uh, the guy who got me back into watches because yeah, uh, I used to be a tech head and I wanted a, a strap for my uh, uh, Nixon Mission uh, smartwatch and the TGV video popped up and then when I was done with tech, um, in my head what replaced it was watches. So yeah, yeah, it was it was all TGV that got me back into watches. So yeah, I, I mean. Me, me too, in a sense. I mean, like you know, he was one of the first people that, like, when I got back into watch collecting after taking like a like a ten year hiatus, really. 
Yeah. Um, he was one of the first guys. And I, and I think I'm, uh, I'm I'm with Kevin here a little bit here. He's like, I don't want to be negative, but I've grown tired of TGV. He's good for someone just getting started in the hobby. I don't think you're, I don't think that's being negative per se. Um, um, and and I don't know if I, I mean, I have grown tired, but I, I, it's not that I've grown tired. It's I just moved on. It's like I moved. It's like I moved on from like, um, Seiko, right? I'm like I got Seiko fatigue. You know, I'm a little done with Seiko now. And I'm so and so my tastes evolve, and 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 that also applies with how I receive content and TGV. Like I still am a subscriber. I still get alerts because um, he doesn't, uh, you know, he does videos maybe once a week or, or it's not too often that he does videos. I mean, compared to some other YouTubers like myself, who I, I put out like four or five things a week just because um, I'm nuts. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, so like, you know, and, and then I pick and choose. Like if it's a video that I want to see, like that Omega Constellation review, then I'll see it. Um, I, this one, when it came up, like I didn't, I didn't click on it and I wouldn't have known, you know, any of uh, any of the points that you brought up, uh, Sanjay, unless you said, hey, let's let's talk about this. And I think it's, it was a good discussion. Yeah. Um, I, the only reason I did click about it, click it was uh, because we were doing this watch suit thing. So I was like mm -hmm. watching a bit more content than than I normally would have. I, I think if I had just seen this pop up, I probably wouldn't have watched it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. Missing the frozen market to see for high school. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, uh, Joe saying he has a very smart plan. People just get into watches, try to find videos on Hamilton Seiko to sell. They find this guy on YouTube as well for case subscribers, and he has reviewed all of them. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to land. Like I said, it's easy to land on TGV when you're first starting the, um, getting into the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, here, uh, somebody wrote something about Fortis, and I wanted to, um, because he 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 got um he did that right here, yeah, yeah, right here. So Fortis flew him out of the Reno Air uh, races two years ago and gave him exclusive assets. Yeah, I mean, like, so he's been doing he he did this, like some hand heart uh, reviews lately, right? And yeah. uh, and uh, and that was interesting. Like, I it almost came out of nowhere. You know, um, so I wonder how much, how much uh, Hanhart uh, had was involved with mm -hmm. that. You know, like now, like I, when I look at TGV and I see his videos, I kind of look at it with, with the eye of, of suspicion. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's why I don't really watch much of this stuff anymore. But and it, it doesn't really need to be that way. Like if you think of, I think Jody from one just one more watch. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he goes above and beyond, you know, letting people know, hey, there might be some bias here. You know, check out these guys' videos. Uh, they've done videos on it too. But, uh, you know, just so you know, I got this watch for free. I have no uh, no inclination to or I have no intention of sending it back or I'm getting a, a prototype. Once this prototype has been sent back, they're sending me a real one. And, uh, um, yeah, it just takes a, a little bit of uh, disclosure, right? Um, yeah. And I, I think in, in some cases it is the law. So, right. um, uh, I mean, innocent until, until proven guilty, but, you know, you'd have to really wonder about that Unico, the, the watch case, how mm -hmm. that would be, you know, how that would be all free, you know, that he wouldn't be getting any compensation for doing any of that. It was a long, long segment on his video. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> suspicion is uh, at 11. Suspicion tuned up to 11. <laughs> yeah. Um. Chris, he likes to cover all price points, literally all price points. Um, yeah, and, and somebody had mentioned that, you know, he does, you know, he's in, you know, does good quality video and stuff like that. And he, and he does, the audio is great, you know. Uh, so, it, he, you know, he's got an appealing side to him, for sure. Yeah. Uh, he's got the English accent, you know, he's got that, he's, he's kind of suave-ish, you know. So, well, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, like... Look, I mean, I think we're all here in the same boat here. We're 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 in this hobby for a little while now. Now we don't really, you know, take too much advice from from TGV anymore, and that's fine. We just moved on. You know, mm -hmm. that's okay. Um, Watch talk. Most uh, YouTube channels are trying to make some type of profit. You know, I guess you know maybe you know there's probably some truth to that. You know, um, I you know I I I am looking to cover my shipping costs. <laughs> 
every month. You know what I mean? If I can cover the amount of watches that I ship uh, on a monthly basis back and forth, you know, um, if I can cover that, you know, I think that there's nothing wrong with that. You know? Yeah, no, and, and there's nothing wrong with making a profit. I think that's uh, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, uh, keep the content going and uh, keeps the uh, the content. And you're honest, right? Yeah, yeah. and you, you just do honest content, you know. Yeah, and I think I think um, I think it's all fair, right? Yeah, but that that disclosure would have been uh, the maker break, right? Because uh, absolutely, we like uh, I know I know you've uh, you have the disclosure on your uh, descriptions. Uh, you have right. the fact that you know it'll help you out when you do buy for something. the Amazon for the Amazon affiliate links, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that's the that's the make or break situation here, right? Mm. I, I think there's the the honest uh, honest outlook you you're seeing on a in a positive light, and then there's a gray light uh, on the on the non disclosed sections. Mm. So. For sure. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to topic two. And um, earlier this week, the uh, the great Tim Masso from uh, Watchbox Studios on Monday um, had his Monday, you know, uh, talk um, that he has every afternoon around 5 p.m. Eastern, I believe it is. I always end up missing it because it's just not the right time. It's just the kids are are, are trying to get the kids to eat, you know. So, um, but I do catch it on later, and uh, and I caught this um, that night because, um, or later that night because uh, I am a uh, owner of a Tudor, a Black Bay 58. Um, and uh, the last couple of years have been, I've been uh, in anticipation of, of some releases or what I would hope they release, and they came out with a uh, the blue uh, Black Bay 58, which I did pick up. So I had both. At one point, I had two Black Bay 58s, uh, the original and the blue. Um, kind of also hoping that you know, hearing rumors like we we have been for the last couple of years of the a Tudor Submariner revival. But um, you know, Tim always the the voice of reason, and he. And look, I mean, it, I, I liked what he said, and it makes a lot of sense. He's like, you know, Tudor, among a lot of the things that he said, but one of the things that really I grabbed to was like, you know, Tudor has now become uh, the, a black, in his eyes, like a Black Bay brand. Uh, mm -hmm. So like the the, the 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 tails wagging the dog here, right? So, um, and that the last thing Tudor needs to do is come out with another diver. Right, um, and uh, and then a diver with a name that's already being used. The Submariner obviously is already being used by Rolex, right? I know Tudor Submariner; they've they've used that name in the past. Um, so you know, I've heard this argument many times that that they don't need to do this, and I guess it depends on how the message is delivered, or or for the if 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 you're ready to hear the message. But it finally got through to me, and you know what? I think he's you know I think he's right. I mean, there's look. Uh, Tudor does not need to come out with a, a Submariner. You know, uh, I know a lot of people want it, um, but they just don't need to, to do that. And I think um, what they need to focus on, and I know they have other stuff on their lineup here in the US, the other stuff is not as popular. I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, right? Um, like their other lines, um, but they are a Black Bay brand. You know what I mean? Like they need to, they need to expand somehow. Um, and and, uh, and appeal to especially the people here people here in the states um, because I think most people now think of Tudor as a as the Black Bay brand. Um, what did you think, uh, Sanjay? Yeah, I think uh, I thought he brought up uh, some really good points. Um, I don't know about uh, the heritage side of things, like uh, you know how Tudor used to produce the Submariner at a lower cost, and that was the position mm. of Tudor. And so I'm sure there's a lot of arguments where people would say, you know, there is a there's still a place for a Tudor Submariner. And I think if they did release uh, a Tudor Submariner, Tim Masso said it as well, there would be wait lists out the out the wazoo. Like mm -hmm. there would be crazy wait lists, and uh, and they would make a, a killing on it. Uh, but it would be a very <clears throat> short sighted uh, endeavor. It wouldn't be, you know, long term. Uh, there would be dilution. I think uh, um, people who already have some mariners. Um, Tim also mentioned that they most likely won't be too impressed with that. Right. Um, and I, I think it would dilute the Tudor brand as well, being known as the discount brand, not uh, uh, not as its its own uh, own brand. And and that's what uh, Tim also also said that. Yeah. You know, Tudor can stand on its own four lugs. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, the he mentioned the advisor that's a, a yeah. real cool piece yeah um, there is the the pelagos as well which yeah and, and the black bay uh heritage those uh those in essence make up the the submariner or just the the pelagos in the uh in the black bay yeah uh, in, one is the the snowflake uh, submariner and the other is a, a modern interpretation of the original uh submariner yeah and, that uh, uh, just from my perspective, I don't really see a, a position for a, another Submariner uh, except for a, an easy cash grab, which yeah. would be short-sighted and, and not wise to do. So, I am I am in agreement with uh, with what Ma Maso was saying. Yeah, um, just uh, seeing here, Submariner. Buy a, if you want one, buy a Rolex, right? Yeah. You know, Tudor is no longer the cheaper version of Rolex brand. Ex exactly. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like how you, what you echoed that Tim said, you know, um, Tudor can, you know, stand on their four lugs, right. Or, or four legs. Right. Um, so, um, definitely, um, Kevin, they should do a redo of the Tudor Ranger, make it like the 1016 Explorer. Uh, then again, falling into that trap of maybe possibly looking too much like a Rolex, you know what I mean? Like maybe, uh, I, I think you, I think you're on the right track, Kevin. Um, I just don't know if they need to look like another, like a poor man's Rolex there. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion, which is not worth anything. That's just my opinion. Um, Blue Shirt is agreeing with with, um, with Joe. Um, let's see here. I've gotten bored of Tudor lately. I had two uh, Black uh, 58 Blues, both had issues. Hmm. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Alex. I mean, I know you know, that, ha I mean, that can happen. Um, you know, a lot of people I've heard um, are, are hoping for a Black Bay 58 GMT um, version. I've heard that, right? Um, not necessarily uh, from from any source, but just from people that I know who are like Tudor. And uh, I just don't see that happening either. Um, they would be cannibalizing the 41 uh, GMT and then, and that, GMT still, I mean, has issues. I mean, I don't know if they fixed all their issues with the with the date change on that one, but um, you know, they still need some time before they before they even entertain uh, a GMT version. Which again, I think would cannibalize the forty one um, yeah. GMT. It would probably come um, a few years down the line. I'm sure yeah, at, at least. Yeah. I tell you, I mean, like you know, Tudor, like. You know, man, that Pelagos, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like more and more every day. I'm like, you know, that's that's one of the best watches out there. Yeah. Um, you know, um, tool watches, it's just um, the materials used, the sizing, the look. Um, I love the blue uh, and that uh, on, on the Pelagos. Um, just a just a great looking and tough watch, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I had the LHD uh, for, for some time. Oh, did I, you? Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. get a little uh, tired of the size, uh -huh. um, but I, I have a really small wrist, so that's expected. I, I had a lot of fun with it. It was kind of like my fun brash watch. Yeah, uh, and uh, and once I got a little tired of of how big it looked on my wrist, I, I sold it on. But yeah, oh man, uh, a Black Bay fifty eight size Pelagos. I, I think that would that would <laughs> right. have a huge wait list as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Rich Ross is, you know, he's got a good point here. Um, not calling everything uh, Black Bay, the, the naming convention. So, like, I took a little bit of an issue when I got the Black Bay 58 Blue. Um, and I, I think a lot of the grief that the watch was getting, look, for, for a year or two, people wanted another variation of the Black Bay 58. Um, and finally, after a couple of years, um, Tudor gave it to you, right? Two years later, after the original release, they gave it to you, and it was a blue. And then people were just like, uh, you know, not not terribly impressed. And I think they did a disservice to the Black Bay Fifty Eight Blue by calling it the Black Bay Fifty Eight Blue. It has nothing to do with the Black Bay Fifty Eight. It was just, just the sizing was the same. So if they went with a different name, perhaps the naming convention, that might have like helped, you know, because uh, you know the watch was initially hot, and then like kind of fell off a little bit. Um, and then people still have that hang up. That it's not as good as the original. Well, if they called it something different but kept the same size, it would that would never have been an argument. Yeah, um, in my mind. Uh, I think they will redo the Heritage Chrono line. Man, I love I love their the Heritage Chrono. Yeah, um, it's such a it's such a cool 
looking uh, chrono uh, on the, leather. The blue and orange one, like the. Uh, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that that's well, that's one. That's yeah. That's um, right. Um, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the. I'm sorry. My bad. I was thinking about the the, the Black Bay, the the Chrono, and the Black oh, Bay series. Uh, yeah, but that but the Heritage Chrono is actually pretty awesome too. Yeah. Um. Uh. Good. Good looking watch. Um. See, Kevin has a North flag and loves it. <laughs> yeah, the North flag. They discontinued that, right? I mean, uh, yeah. and that was an interesting watch. I didn't really care for it at first, but it kind of grew on me every time I saw pictures. Then Random Rob picked one up, and he and then he sold it, but. Um, I, I dig it, man. I dig it. Um, Sanjay flipper for life. All right. Chaz coming on strong there. <laughs> uh, do the blue Pelagos love mine. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, 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 I have the U 50 coming in in the next couple of weeks. Um, I might be done with dive watches for a while, but if I'm, but I know if I'm, Going when I'm in the market for another dive watch, it's definitely going to be the the Blue Pelagos. Um, such a great looking watch, and I think I, I'll be good with the size. I, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist, and I think I'll be I'll be fine with it. Um, yeah, you should you should be fine. Mine is a six and a quarter inch, so your your wrist will be great. Gotcha. Nick is saying that the the North Flag is still on Tudor's website, so it still can be bought. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. But uh, maybe they still they still have inventory. Maybe they're not making it um, going forward a anymore. Uh, Black Bay Dark uh, PVD is very cool, but I wish they would make it a ceramic version. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, all right, so let's table aside the Tudor Black Bay talk, and we'll we'll wait and see what they do. And uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to. I don't know what I'm rooting for. I don't know if I'm rooting for a, 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 a Tudor a Samariner or not. It's not like I'll be able to get it, you know, because uh, <laughs> it, it will be waitlisted like crazy. But uh, yeah, the, for the overall health of the brand, I'm hoping that they, they kick the can down the road a little bit longer yeah. on that, you know. Um, so next topic, pretty good stream. Um, the producer, Michael, why are luxury watches so expensive? And he had a guy from what was it Watch TV? Yeah, the um, Watch TV. yeah. Mark and then, it. yep. And then he had um, the, um, Jacob from Jacob Co. Um, yeah. So, so tell us, uh, tell us what you got out of this, um, Sanjay. Yeah, I, I was just kind of uh, clicking through producer Michael's videos and uh, didn't really expect. Uh, too much out of this stream. I thought I'd get bored with it for, mm -hmm. uh, for a few minutes because uh, you know Jacob and Co is such a, a high opulent brand that yeah. so that sometimes you know I, I'm not even too too interested in. It's like uh, it's like going in and looking at uh, a Bugatti Chiron or something. Um, I know a lot of people like doing that, but I I'm like uh, you know what this is so. So crazy, so out of my reach that I don't even want to, <laughs> don't even want to entertain my eyes with it. But um, I, I, I found it to be a really interesting conversation. It was uh, uh, kind of uh, basic, I suppose, um, kind of uh, like a uh, suitable for for a beginner as well. But uh, uh, I, I found it to be a very uh, stimulating conversation. I didn't expect uh, uh, Jacob to be. Uh, a humble kind of person, you know, and he, yeah. he to be a really down to earth kind of humble person um, and talking a, a lot about how much time and effort these uh, these watches take. And uh, he was wearing the uh, the Bugatti Chiron uh, timepiece as well. And uh, I, out of curiosity, looked it up after <laughs> and it actually has a W16 engine, <laughs> like a yeah. yep. model of a W16 engine in there and yep. it, it works and everything. And yeah. It's, stunning st absolutely stunning to look at um just to see those pistons it, it looks like it looks like you're looking at something at two, 240 hertz it's so crystal clear it's just uh <laughs> it was it was really nice 4k 240 hertz <laughs> yeah um so i was i i found a new appreciation i know you mentioned that too but i found a new appreciation for some of these watches that uh, seem so 
opulent and crazy that I wasn't interested before. Uh, but now just seeing how much work someone has put into uh, these timepieces, you know, even though it might not be for me uh, mm -hmm. and I never see one uh, in the in the flesh, I can really appreciate that someone put put blood, sweat, and tears into into building something uh, so intricate and so amazing. And then uh, he went on to show uh, a lineup that Jacob & Co. has called the Billionaire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. It's uh, a watch made out of diamonds. Uh, so um, case back, uh, bracelet, everything is just baguette diamonds, perfectly cut, excruciatingly cut to fit perfectly onto the watch and he said it takes a year just to make a watch mm -hmm. and they've only made four of them and the one he showed off was the the fourth one um so just mind-blowing how much work uh, that would take someone a master craftsman and artisan uh, to to do that so yeah i was really impressed and i was uh, impressed by uh, uh by mark andrea as well the the watches tv um uh, gentleman who I've seen here and there, but I've never really followed the uh, Watches TV. And uh, he seems uh, like a really down to earth guy, too. A really, mm -hmm. uh, really well spoken um, gentleman who is in Switzerland. Uh, so he's got uh, first hand access. So I'm, I'm looking forward to watching more of those videos. But what do you think, Rob? So I like you. When uh, when well, when you suggested producer Mike, I'm like, oh, what, what's this going to be like? Because I, I, I've watched producer Michael's videos, man, and they're like, they're out there, man. Like you know, like in a in a stratosphere that that I a will never be or or don't even have any interest in in, in regards to some of his tastes and watches, and he, and he's kind of a character himself too. So like, I can't take too much of of of, of that. Um, that energy that that he has um, when I'm watching his videos, um, but I but I am a subscriber, right? And and every once in a while I'll catch a headline to one of the videos and, and I'm interested and and I'll take a look and I'll last a couple minutes. So I too didn't know how long I was going to last on this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he was like conducting. I guess it was it was a stream. It wasn't live. I guess they they cut it up and, and then edited it out and then and then you know sent it out. Um, so I didn't know how long I was going to hang. I ended up hanging in there. I, 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 went, I, I watched the whole thing. I ended up hanging in there the first time for about 20 minutes, and then I just had to do something. I just wasn't anticipating hanging in there at all. And I was surprised that I got there because it was an interesting conversation. And, uh, you know, a couple of things, a couple of takeaways. I, I too, di didn't know anything about um, uh, uh, Jacob and Co., the, the, the guy who, Jacob, who, who, who founded the company. Uh, I got a sense that he was kind of like a, you know, at least he portrayed himself as kind of like a, a normal down to earth guy that just, you know, has this uh, ability to design um, uh, watches and, and be a creator um, and in a, at an opulent level that, you know, I will never be able to, you know, understand. Um, and and so like when I've seen his watches before and I never paid any mind, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. This is silly, you know, but yeah having listened to him like you know the, the conversation like you know was the root of it was like you know why are luxury watches so expensive right mm -hmm. and he explained like so i just uh, assumed that a lot of these guys just like put an arbitrary figure on it yeah there, there's some work going into it of course some artistry and that's what you're paying for but i didn't realize that like you know some of these uh, pieces have been in the works for a few years just conceptually, and then finally, when they get to start building it, like the billionaire, it takes about a year to build a seven million dollar watch that has all these hundred and seventy three carats of diamonds. It's, I think he said it was one hundred seventy three carats, um, which is ridiculous. But when you see the watch, and and you see it, and like, wow, that 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 looks that makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, so so I appreciated that aspect that they were they were tackling that question because there is a lot of R and D uh, going into it. Um, and uh, and he only produces so many watches, and that has to go into figuring the price out. Um, you know, I um, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a palatable conversation that I could that I didn't think I was going to be able to hang in there. Mm -hmm. And um, and and some of these creations, like you know, producer Michael said something to, that was very very interesting, and I kind of know what he's talking about. He says, I, he doesn't, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, I don't buy a watch to tell the time. Right. I buy the watch because I, I, I see it as a, a work of art and I like looking at it. Not to tell the time mostly, but just to look at it. And, and you know what? 
And he's like, I don't care what the movement is. I don't care what the movement is. And uh, and you know what? There's part of me that gets that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this part of me that, you know, uh, this has a certain amount of, okay, but I mean, aesthetically, it is beautiful. And uh, and, it, and it hits me in every single way that way. And um, and that's why I make some of the decisions, some of the watch decisions I make. You know, I like tool watches. That's for, because I like also the aesthetic of tool watch. I really don't care what's in there as long as it's built tough. That's why I like Zen, even though they use pretty good movements, you know, workhorse movements. Mm -hmm. But I like something pretty like this, you know, uh, to look at. Now this has a, it was a manufactured movement. It's not an in-house movement. That's a fine with me, but it is um, um, hand gear shade. It's, it's uh, it's 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 you know engraved it's 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 all the all the all the awesome artistry stuff that takes a guy with a little chisel for about a year to do mm -hmm. that's awesome to me you know so i i never thought i would say that i could relate to something that producer michael would say yeah um so you, make, you know i'm sorry go ahead no yeah you you make a great point that uh actually was something that i found to be really uh relatable as well just in uh, completely different levels but I too am drawn to like the art uh, that is watchmaking, the art that is the uh, usually the dials, which is why I'm really drawn to Grand Seiko. Um, the dials are are something that's uh, close to me. I really like nature. Grand Seiko does nature, and then the dials become a work of art, and uh, and so I really related to producer Michael there. I've never really been interested in actual artwork that you put on a on a wall because mm -hmm. you know i'm at home for like a couple of hours i'm sleeping for most of the time i'm never really home <laughs> so i've never really been interested in art that you put on a wall but once i got into watches that that really opened up art for me and so uh, i i really related to that yeah yeah i i i do like I do like the art that is on, uh, that is on walls, and then uh, but I don't have any, right? I mean, I have some prints, and and I have a couple of local uh, friends who are, are local artists, and and they do something stuff like that. So, um, so I, I mean, I appreciate that, and that's that's the same when I go. All right, for example, when I go to uh, MoMA, right, in in Manhattan, that same feeling that I get when I see like a painting, right, from from a famous artist, you know, historical significant artist. Um, I get that same feeling when I look at certain watches, you know what I mean? And uh, and so that's how I, and, and so for me, it's always about the look of the watch first. I, I, I never, I, I think I've always felt that way, but I was never able to bring that home and articulate it in a sense. Like I didn't know why I liked certain watches or why I like watches in general. I don't use them to tell the time often, you know? Yeah. I use my phone uh, or my G-Shock, um, a regular manual wind watch. Like, like my first instinct is to check my phone, you know, before I check that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think, um, yeah. I do that too, except uh, out of principle, I take my phone out of my pocket and I realize, oh, what am I doing? I put it back in my pocket. Yeah, yeah, and then like, I've done that too. Actually, I've done that too. That's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I've done yeah. that too. But uh, anyway, uh, awesome, awesome selection. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad I saw the video because I, I now I have kind of like a different. I have a, a newfound respect and understanding for for Jacob and Co. that I didn't have before, and I kind of will give producer Michael a pass in the future, and 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 just be more open to to some more of his uh, videos um, because I, I was turned off for a little while, but I, I, I he handled that very very well. And then I, you know the, the watch TV guy, like you know now uh, that's a new something new for me to follow. Yeah. Um, so um, let's uh, let's move on to the last topic. And Federico came out this week with five reasons why Rolex is perfect watch, and I got so. So you, you you mentioned, you know, how you felt about the TGV video, right? That it was kind of like, you know, the ulterior motive there. <laughs> um, I feel the same way about Federico. I feel like this was like very clickbaity, right? Um, yeah. Anytime you're going to put five reasons why Rolex is a perfect watch, is like, you know what you're doing. And whatever, that that's totally fine. Um, so let me run down the list that he, that he wrote. I, I took some notes. Um, number one, they're tough and they just work. Okay. Yeah. I mean... That's true. You know, I have a I have a buddy of mine. I haven't talked to him in a while, but he um, was a watchmaker, 
And uh, he moved to London um, maybe about 10 years ago, and he, and he works for Rolex. He's a, he's a watchmaker for Rolex. And a few years ago, I, I, I messaged him. I'm like, listen, I'm like, what what Rolex? Here's my budget. What Rolex did I get? He's like, he's like, he's like, you should either get, he's like, get a Mariner or get a Sea Dweller. Those are the toughest watches that you can ever get. Um, they're well built, and you never have to worry about that. And, you know, I, I know he, he's a, a watchmaker for, for Rolex. Um, but I known him for years, um, and I know that there was no ulterior motive on that. I mean, I don't think he cares if I buy a Rolex or not. Um, and he, he's not necessarily a Rolex fanboy per se. I, I don't think I think he's got a sea dweller, but that's about it. Um, but uh, or he's not a massive Rolex collector. But I mean, he he he's the, you know he's worse on these watches. He knows, you know. So uh, so yeah, okay, Federico, you got number one. He's like number two, the bracelet. It's like you never have to take it off, right? It's an iconic. The watch, most of their watches, sports watches are iconic on the bracelet, so you never really have to take the bracelet off, right? You never have to switch it around and do whatever you want. It's it's made for the, the bracelet, and and then the water resistance, like all their watches are 100 meters at least water resistance, except for the Sweeney line. Um, number three is a status symbol. Okay, yeah, I got that. Number four, hold value. He's like you're either gonna, you know, break even. Maybe you lose a little bit. Some cases you you make money, um, but that's another um, um, plus four. Um, why it's a perfect watch. And then finally, uh, extreme versatility. Uh, and he cited that you know you can wear a Submariner with a suit nowadays. Um, so fairly fairly safe. Yeah. You know <laughs> reasons like I think anybody could have came up with those. And maybe maybe that's and maybe that's fine. Maybe. Maybe they're so vanilla that that's why it's a perfect watch, you mm -hmm. know, or his reason. What 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 did you think about that? Yeah, about that video. I I agree. You know, I think it was a uh, a title to or a video to kind of help him accelerate his growth now that he's hit one hundred thousand. So yeah. I think uh, it would probably draw in a few more people. And once you once you hit a milestone like that, it seems you get like a, a boost of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, it, he might be trying to capitalize on that, um, hit the YouTube algorithm, whatever the new algorithm is uh, nowadays. Um, but yeah, they, those were really. I was. Uh, I I watched it um, probably around as soon as it came out. It uh, it popped up on my feed, so I watched it and I thought, oh, that was kind of a letdown of a video. You know, there was nothing, nothing groundbreaking, nothing really right. interesting stuff uh, that you and I could have come up with and. Um, yeah, he, he mentioned he's going to do another video, five reasons why you shouldn't buy a Rolex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so that that would be interesting to see as well. But uh, yeah, one one thing is that I really don't like clickbait titles. I, I will go out of my way to not watch a video uh, if, if it has a clickbait title. Um, there's uh, just a side note, there used to be this, uh, there is this car mechanic uh, guy called uh, Scotty Kilmer. And I, uh, I, since I do a lot of my car repairs myself, I used to watch a lot of his videos. And he became like the most clickbaity uh, title guy, uh, exploiting any uh, world event to uh, to get people to watch his videos. And yeah. I watched a single video. Right. And there are a few uh, watch YouTubers too that I've kind of you know stopped watching because the titles are so Rolex this, Rolex that. Yeah. This blows away Rolex. This is uh, Rolex makes the best thing. And yeah, so clickbait really turns me off, and and uh, I I had to kind of press myself to watch this too, <laughs> right. but yeah, it it was they were really safe, like you mentioned. Um, yeah, I, I look, I've been guilty. I I've made a couple of Rolex videos, um, but you know, don't worry, none of them. I, I didn't get any views on any of them, <laughs> so so that that'll teach me. Um, anyway, so uh, watch once over. Probably should, Bobby should probably check out Alexander. Shorokov, I have um, very, very cool, interesting watches, man. Um, he's a Russian guy, but I think they're German made, these watches. Like they have German, I believe that's the one. Um, watch once over if you could verify that with me if I'm thinking about the same guy. Um, yeah, Jeff says, he says, I mean, he did mention that he's that he's not usually a Rolex fanboy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, hey, Ray, young and excellency, thanks for joining us, man. 
um, from Atlantic Canada. So is that like um, Newfoundland? I New Brunswick, Newfoundland. New Brunswick, yeah. My yeah. wife, my wife wants to go to Prince Edward Island because of some book she read, uh, Anne of Green Gables or something like that. So she right. wants to, so she she wants to go there. All right, well, whatever, road trip, that's fine. I've heard uh, from England, it just rains all the time. <laughs> yeah, probably right. Yeah. Well, you know, right? You, uh, I mean, have you ever been? No, I haven't. No. To PEI. What's the furthest east in Canada? Have you been? Um, have you gone? Like, have you been to Quebec? Have you been to Quebec City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just I think just about Quebec. Uh, yeah. n nothing further east. I've uh, I've been in Canada for a while. I've been in mm. Canada for ten years, uh, but I haven't really traveled much. I really, gotcha. want, but yeah, I haven't yet. Well, you're you're in Ontario, so there's really nowhere else, no no reason to leave, right? I mean, yeah, everything. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sure Canada, Canada's beautiful. I'd love to like, get the, a chance to uh, to explore it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff saying, in, uh, in, in his opinion, the perfect watch is the Zen 104 at the end. It's a pretty good watch, man. Pretty good watch. Um, you are correct. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I got a. You know he's he's out there, man, and he's got some like great, great, cool looking watches. Uh, I, I yeah, yeah. I I think I, I I'm gonna have to check him out like on, on a pre owned market and and see what comes up. You know, put a little alert on the uh, watch recon or watch patrol. Um, Nick J, Atlantic uh, Canada is very nice. Okay, hmm. yeah. I I proposed to my wife in Quebec City. Oh really? So, yeah, yeah, and I. And I don't know. I mean, I may have said it on a stream or two, but uh, I got. A, uh, we were on this little park in a, on a hill in old uh, Quebec, and there was like maybe like a cannon from like what uh, from a thousand years ago when they fought, you know, the 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 Vikings or whatever, whatever, happened, whatever the English or whatever, right? And uh, and it was on the hill, and I got on a knee and I proposed, and uh, and I started cramping up, um, uh, and then like I had to go back on uh, on two knees. Cause I was like, you know, trying to spit out the words, will you marry me? And not, and I was in pain. And then like my other leg started cramping up. So like, uh, as soon as my wife said, yes, I had like roll over and like, she was massaging my, my hamstring and I was massaging the other hamstring and people were just like walking by just like, what's going on here? <laughs> anyway, uh, Sanjay, I pulled the trigger on the full ceramic case Longines HydroQuest. Very cool. That's, he mentioned that last night. He he mentioned the Longin Hydro Conquest in the live stream, and I didn't know what he meant. But that's that's really cool. Um, Joe grew up in Rochester and spent a lot of time in Toronto. One of my favorites. You know, we um, so in that trip where I uh, proposed to my wife, we yeah. uh, drove up to Quebec City first, and then we spent a couple of days in Montreal, and then we were we we're going to go to. She went to U, uh, University of Michigan, so we were going to go um, to their first game of the season. And we were gonna stop in Toronto for a couple of days. And I had like no interest in stopping in Toronto. I don't know why. Never been there before. But man, I'm glad we did, man. I, I love Toronto, man. Yeah. Toronto was awesome. Awesome, <laughs> awesome city, man. Yeah. Um it's a lot really of really liked it. Really liked it a lot. A lot of watch enthusiasts in Canada. Quebec is cool. Yeah, man. I mean, Quebec look, you know, old town Quebec was 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 adorable. You you know, you only need like a day and a half. In, 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 in old Quebec. You don't need longer than that um, because you see everything pretty quickly, but um, but uh, still still adorable place. Yeah. Vancouver, would love to go to Vancouver. Actually, for almost a year, I lived in Washington State outside of Tacoma. And that was when my plan trips was going up to, uh, to Vancouver, but never, never made it out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in Canada. I really enjoyed it, Junior Johnson says. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rob made me two hamstrings. <laughs> two hamstrings. <laughs> That's just bad luck. <laughs> yeah, but she said yes. So yeah. you know, I mean, she said yes. And we were eating baguettes. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, Toronto's great as long as you don't live there and work there. But I guess is is it like kind of like um, dense, densely populated? Is it? It's pretty bad. Yeah. No, like I would, I will avoid driving. If, if at all at all costs, if I'm in uh, downtown Toronto, 
Yeah. It, it sucks. <laughs> really? I mean, well, I mean, I guess it's all relative. I mean, like, I lived outside of New York City, Manhattan, all, right. pretty much all my life. And so, like, I'm used to, like, densely populated. And um, and I guess I could see that. I mean, the, where we were at, it was, it was, it was very city, like, very, but, I mean, it didn't, I guess, because I'm used to it, it didn't, it just didn't, you know. Alex, thank you so much. Great Steve. <laughs> Robbie and Sandra, great session. Thank you so much for uh, the super chat. Pre I appreciate it. Uh, knee jerk reaction. Hey, oh, all right. All right. Um, watch Medicine Bobby Z. I came in uh, late out of the South Beach waiting for food. We'll watch the stream later. Well, thanks, man. You know, I'm hope, hope you're always, hope you, always rubs it in, Bobby. <laughs> hope, you, hope you got a sunburn, Bobby. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, uh, dude, Washington State, checking in. We're outside of Tacoma, a town called Lakewood. Yeah, they had a jack in a box. I never saw a jack in a box before. It's like a burger joint. Um, oh. And I, there was an Albertsons, and I lived in a complex. I used to, I was dating, I met a girl. <laughs> this is a long time ago, this is over 20 years ago. I met a girl, Mardi Gras. And, um, she was in the army, so she was stationed. I think it's Fort Lewis up there, and um, she didn't. She was an officer, so she didn't have to live on base. And uh, and so she, we lived in, in and and then we started dating, and then I moved in with her because um, I wanted to get out of New Jersey at the time. You know, I just was done. I just want to try something different. And uh, and that, I mean, it was great. It was awesome. I mean, I would I would live in that part of the country easily again, for sure. Um. Real estate in Canada is crazy high right now. Is that is that uh is that true, Sanjay? Is real estate um it is. I, I live on the outskirts of, of Toronto and even like our our house value has like quadrupled in, in two years or three years. Oh wow. It's wow. Yeah, it's mind blowing. It's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, quarantine, you know, people are not selling their homes, right? So there's less inventory. I mean I I don't know how it is in Canada, but here in the state that I live in, that's the issue. Okay. I, I was reading. I was reading today that um, prices, um, home, the average home cost in in New Jersey, where I live, was up twenty two percent compared to last year. Oh, okay. Which wow. is bananas. Yeah. Um, and it's because we have half the inventory that we had last year. Right. Um, so you know, curious to probably a good time to refinance and, and see and pull out some money and see uh, see what you can get. Um, anyway, so I think we're done with that, uh, conversation with, uh, Federico. So, um, and we're almost coming up to a, a, an hour here. Um, Sanjay, anything, anything you've got to promote, anything coming up in your channel stream wise, review wise in the next few days, um, um that you'll want to let the crowd know. I just did a review on the, the Seiko steel master. So the yeah. uh, SPB 185, um, it's a it's a great watch. I really love it. Um, had a couple of alignment issues with it. Um, other than that, I still have to do my state of the collection. I, I oh, dude, watch. you gotta do it. <laughs> I wanted to get it done before the end of February, but I kind of missed the boat. Unless if I record it now, but I don't want to. <laughs> but you know what? You know what you can do, man. Do it live. Do okay. a live stream. You know what I mean? Like you you have Streamyard, right? If you yeah. have um, if you have another camera, you could do. If you have another camera. You can just open up a new uh, window, yeah, and add the camera, and just you know, you know, have one window um, as uh, as your collection and going through it, and then one going live, and then you know, people in the chat, you can interact. I don't know that you don't you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, like, if you if you don't want to go through the rigmarole of like recording and editing, yeah, um, you know, live. I think that's what I'm going to probably do next year. You know, I I kind of did that when my my first live video was. Uh, like a yeah. state of the collection. It was a Q and A, and then state of the collection. And I, I didn't realize how bad my webcam looked. Uh, so it, it's just trash. It's a, right. it's a horrible video. <laughs> but yeah. uh, which is why I kind of want to do a, do it again. But yeah, that's a that's a good point. Now that I have this thing going, um, I, I might do it live, uh, or I might, I might do something you know, kind of really quick, kind of yeah. like a live format, but. Uh, uh, just go through it really quickly. And that way I won't have to edit too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the plan at least. P Puget Sound is a beautiful area. You know, when, um, 
when I was living in Tacoma um, in the summertime, they had something called the Tacoma Aroma, which some like some scent that came off of like the sound, and it was it was interesting. Um, Olympia is beautiful. Uh, uh, the state capital of Washington State. It, um, beautiful, beautiful city. I went down there once. Um, it was awesome. Awesome. Loved it. Um, yeah. So, Sanjay, you know, um, awesome having you again. We're, Thanks. We'll do it same, same time, same time next week. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, guys at the chat, uh, thank you so much for stopping uh, by on a late Sunday night. Hope you have a great week at work. Um, you can always, um, you know, reach out to Sanjay and I through through Instagram, uh, through email and whatnot. Love interacting with you guys. Yeah. And, uh, and hope you guys have a great night. Good night, guys. Good night.